Welcome to Real Talk, where I give real answers to real questions from real worship leaders. If you are a real worship leader with a real question and you want a real answer, submit your question right here for a future episode, and I just might answer it. Got some good questions this week? Let's talk about it. We usually get songs the day before, Saturday, and they are just a list of YouTube links with the instrumentation totally different. We can't sound like Hillsong with our lineup. Also, the songs are always in different keys than the YouTube link, so you can't play along with them, sometimes as much as a half octave off. So transposing in a DAW is like playing with chipmunks or heathen drunken vocals. Then the practice before service is basically learning the new song form because it's different than the YouTube link. How can you prepare with these instances in play? Our worship leader seems to have no other method at this point. This was actually a comment that I got on a, an episode of Real Talk not too long ago, and I thought, this is something that people struggle with. I've heard this from a lot of people, and it is like probably the most frustrating situation for worship team members. I, I hear it all the time. This is like the main frustration from worship team members is simply, my worship team leader does not get me the song list in time. And it's the main complaint. It's also the easiest fix for worship team leaders. So I'm going to say this very seriously. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't want you to feel bad about it if this is you, but I kind of want you to feel bad about it if this is you. If you are a worship leader who does not get your worship team the songs until the day before, you need to do that. Do I want to go as far to say shame on you? I kind of do. Because it is so simple to pick out songs. Come on, guys. It's so simple to pick out songs, at least at the beginning of the week. I don't know, I don't know when that is for you or what that looks like exactly, but Monday or Tuesday, you should be sending out a song list. And I feel confident enough in saying that, that it is easy enough to pick out songs early in the week that you have no excuse, no excuse to not send out songs early. So just, just do it. Just make it happen one week and you will see that it's possible every week. What excuse do people have? They say, my pastor doesn't know what they're preaching on until the night before, so I don't know what songs I'm going to sing. Well, then I guess you don't pick songs that connect with what your pastor's going to preach on, because if that's how it's going to work, the worship team needs to know the songs beforehand to be able to lead well. My pastor doesn't know what they're preaching on until the night before. Therefore, those songs cannot match up because it is a logical impossibility because my team needs the, the songs early in the week. Problem solved. There's nothing that necessitates 100% your songs having to match up with what your pastor preaches on. Is that ideal? Yes, but the more that I've led, the more I've realized it's only really ideal whenever it's the song coming out of the message. We want that to be a response song. So even if you only have one song that you don't pick out earlier in the week, you can pick the other songs before what your pastor preaches on. You can pick those out earlier in the week. Just do it. Now, to answer the question, how can you, as a worship team member, function in this sort of environment where you don't get the songs until the night before and it's just here are the songs that we're doing, here's a list of YouTube links. The number one step is to tell your worship leader that you cannot function in that environment. And by the way, you are justified in doing so. I've been leading worship for 17, 18 years now, something like that. And I consider myself a pretty good musician, at least in terms of being able to play worship songs. If I was on a worship team and a worship leader didn't send out the songs until the night before, I would not be properly prepared to lead worship on Sunday. It is an unrealistic expectation for the worship team to be able to lead well if you do that. Therefore, it is not unrealistic for you to point that out to your worship team leader. And I'm not saying that you have to be mean about it and like chastise them for doing a horrible job leading you even though sometimes maybe they need that. But you can just say, I, I can't learn these songs. And if this is how it's gonna be, then I'm not sure that I can continue to play on the worship team because I don't feel equipped to do the job that I'm called to do. My job on Sunday mornings, from a musical perspective at least, is to be able to play the songs well enough to lead them that they're not a distraction for the people and to actually know the songs that, that I'm leading. I can't do that when I get them the, the day before. I just don't have time to do that. 
therefore I cannot be on the worship team because I cannot fulfill the, the role of a worship team member if I can't fulfill my job because I don't get the things that I need to, to be on the worship team. Simple as that. That's the conversation, essentially. I would put it a little bit nicer than that, but just tell them your frustrations. Now, in the meantime, what would I do? I'm trying to think of quick tips to, if I had to learn some songs in a day, what would I do? First of all, I would recognize, and hopefully your worship leader isn't doing this, but hopefully your worship leader isn't picking out a brand new set of songs that nobody on your team knows every single week, which means that there are songs that your team knows that you have played plenty of times before. So you should be good on those and you should think to yourself, okay, what are the standard songs that we do on a Sunday morning? I don't know how many songs like that there are for your team, but if you're worship leader sending out the list the night before, I would bet that they aren't learning new songs very often because that's very hard to function in that way. So you probably have a smaller repertoire, I would hope. So learn those songs well. Throughout the week, pick out some of those songs and work on them. That will set you up for future success because when one of those songs does come up, then you'll be like, I already know this one and I don't have to focus on that. Other than that, I guess, I, I don't know, like I don't want you to have to make excuses for your worship team leader not leading you well and thinking that it's your fault that you can't lead well on Sundays musically because your worship team leader didn't resource you well. So I'm not gonna make excuses for them and try to put all the pressure on you. So take the pressure off yourself and say, I wanna lead the best that I can, but my worship team leader is not preparing me to lead the best that I can, so I will just do the best that I can with the, with the resources that I have and that's the best that I can do. And God is not going to fault me for that, but he will fault the bad worship team leader for that, for not leading their team well. I know that that's a very frank way to put it, but I said what I said. I've been on a worship team playing keyboard for several years. I've never really felt a part of things. Comments back and forth all around me, but mostly not included. People talk about each other's playing, but I don't recall ever being affirmed by anyone on the team. Is it time to step away? If so, how do you suggest I explain? I can sense the, the disappointment and frustration in this question, and it makes me disappointed and frustrated because I can imagine what that would be like on a team where you see everybody, they seem to be getting along, and you kind of feel like an outsider, like nobody really talks to you unless they have to, and they're not like necessarily encouraging to you. First of all, if you're a worship team leader, which I primarily talk to on this channel, if you're a worship team leader, look out for this on your team. Look out for the person who feels this way and make every attempt to draw them in to the community of your team. We don't want to ever create a click worship team where this is the worship team and when somebody new comes in, they have a hard time breaking into the worship team. So if you are a worship team leader, do everything in your power to include people in the conversation, to make them feel welcomed, to affirm them on a regular basis, tell them that they sound good, to connect them with other people on your worship team so that they feel like they have a relationship with other people on the worship team. Now to the person who asked this question, you asked, is it time to leave my worship team because of this? And I will say, just from what you've said, I don't see anything in your situation that necessitates leaving the worship team. I understand that it might be frustrating, that it might be disappointing, but I don't think, I don't feel like I fit in on the worship team. I don't know if that's a sufficient reason to say I'm done. Because why are we on the worship team? Ultimately, we want to lead our people, the people of our church, in worship. We want to use the gifts that God has given us to point people to his worthiness and provide them with the opportunity to respond. Can you do that in your current situation? Sure, it's nice to have relationships with the people on our worship team, but is it a necessity? I don't know if it's, it's a nicety. It's not necessarily a necessity. That was a lot of ends there. It's a nicety, it's not necessarily a necessity. So I guess what I'm saying is I definitely understand your frustration, but I don't think that that in and of itself is a good enough reason to say I'm done with the worship team. Now, I would push a little bit 
deeper if I were you and think, do I just feel this way on the worship team or do I feel this way in my church at large? And if you don't feel that way in your church at large and you feel like you connect with other people in your church, then I, I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't overthink it too much. And yeah, it kind of stinks, but once again, not really a, a reason to leave the team. Like, I just don't fit in. I guess the other thing that you could do is to talk to your worship team leader and just tell them. You said, because that's the other thing you asked. You said, how do you suggest I explained? Which kind of tells me that you're already ex expecting to step away. And I will tell you that I don't think, I've already said it a million times, but I don't think that this is a good enough reason to step down from the worship team. So how do you suggest I explain it? I would just tell the worship team leader, you know, I'm kind of struggling recently because I feel like I've been on the team for a while and it just feels like I don't have the relationships that some of the other people on the team have with, with each other. Like I see these people hanging out all the time. And I see these people hanging out all the time and I see them talking before and after the service and I just always kind of feel like I'm left out if I'm being honest. I didn't know if you had any wisdom or advice or something that I should be aware of that would help me connect with people more or something like that. I'd, I'd have that conversation with my worship team leader way before I had the conversation. I don't fit in here, so I'm, I'm out of here. Like I always say, I don't know your exact situation. I don't know all the intricacies of what's going on in your team, but somebody else on your team does. So find somebody that you trust. Maybe it's not even your worship team leader because this isn't like a problem on the, the worship team that they need to solve necessarily, although maybe it could be because people need to be more inclusive. But even if you just have somebody you trust on your worship team or somebody else in your church, your pastor, talk to them about it. They know the intricacies more than I know, but do talk to somebody about it and just tell them how you feel. And maybe you'll get some insight that changes your perspective. Now, if you are a worship team leader and you want to make sure that your team members don't feel this way, I think one of the best ways to do that is to have a solid plan for your worship rehearsal because the worship rehearsal time is one of those times, the probably the, the most beneficial time for your team to connect with each other. So you need to have a plan in order to make that happen so it's not just everybody shows up at worship rehearsal and we run through the songs and then we go home. That's why I put together the worship rehearsal blueprint. In that blueprint, you will find a step-by-step -step plan for your next worship rehearsal. A perfect worship rehearsal that leads your team well, yes, musically so that they're prepared to lead on Sunday, but spiritually and relationally as well so that they grow closer to God and they grow closer to each other. And you can do that if you follow the steps that I give you in the worship rehearsal blueprint. So if you don't have a plan for your worship rehearsal and you just show up and run through songs and then go home, you need this worship rehearsal blueprint. So check it out. I'll link it down in the description below. Other than that, thanks so much for joining me. Until I see you in the next video. Keep leading worship well.